for do not kill. You know, I've never physically taken and killed somebody in my lifetime. But what did the Lord say when you become angry? You hold bitterness against somebody. You just, you hold hatred. You're a murderer. That's how the Lord defines his law. You go down through every one of those Ten Commandments, I'll tell you what. The Lord being your teacher, it's going to show you something, the very holy character of God. You mean God is just that holy? Yes, God's just that holy. His justice inflexible. And apart from that justice being satisfied, he will not acquit the guilty. Won't do it. You say, well, how can he be a God of love then? His love in Christ. He loves his son. He loves those that he's given to his son. That's where his love is. Because his son has satisfied and fulfilled that law on behalf of his people. That's how he can love sinners, only in Christ. But the law was given to reveal his holiness. Second, the law was given to reveal man's total depravity, total sinfulness before God. That's why it was given. You see something of God's holiness, you're going to see something of your own for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He had to be sinless, and yet he had to be the sin bearer. The only way that could be done was by imputation. Now, I know there are those that minimize that and say, well, it had to be more than imputation. <laughs> but imputation is imputation. When you put to the account of somebody the guilt and the charge of their sin, they stand in the place of that guilt. And that charge. And I was thinking about this. If it was just, if it was a matter of our condemnation of having sin infused in us, as is being said, what about animals that die? There is an imputation of sin upon this world by Adam's sin. I, I thought about that laying in bed the other day when I woke up, and I, I thought about animals dying. Do they die because sin has been infused in them? <laughs> no. They are part of the imputation of the judgment of sin in this world. And that is real. You, you look at a little bird that lays there dead or a squirrel lays there dead. A pet that dies. It, it's as real. That, that death is as real and, and, and yet they are affected. This whole creation is affected by an imputation of Adam's fault. Imputation of sin. And that has to be taken away. That has to be cut away. That has to be done away for those that God has purposed to save. And so Gill says that. He said, made sin itself by imputation. The sins of all his people were transferred unto him, laid upon him, placed to his account, and he sustained their persons and bore their sins. And having them upon him and being chargeable with them and answerable for them, he was treated by the justice of God as if he had been not only a sinner but a mass of sin. That's what God was dealing with. It wasn't the person of Christ. It was that sin that had to be cut away, had to be put away. Be not moved away from the gospel which you have heard. There are many that profess to know Christ, profess with their mouth that Christ died for them, and yet Christ will say, I never knew you. They follow just any whim of doctrine, but here he says, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. The Lord used Paul in a mighty way. When he says it's preached to every creature under heaven, he's talking about all nations. By the time you finish reading the book of Acts, you understand that God purposed to have the gospel spread to every nation that existed at that time, in the known world at that time. All right? <laughs>